Good afternoon, Osa Berry children. It's Miss Elizabeth, and I have a story for you today. This is a fairy tale from long ago, far away Germany. Now, I'm going to read it to you, so if you just want to sit back and listen, you can. There won't, it'll just be me reading on the um, video. So just make yourself comfortable and listen into this um, interesting old story. The name of this story is The River Fairy. One bright spring morning, a poor widow wanted to make doughnuts for her children. She had run out of oil, though, so she sent her daughter to a neighboring village to beg for some from her aunt. With a stoneware pot under her arm, the little girl set out on her errand. Her mother had forgotten, though, that it was a special spring feast day when people are supposed to go, in those days they would go to church and the bells would ring to call them there. So, when the church bells ring for service, all of the fairies and elves that usually hide in the thickets and the underbrush are free to roam around. <laughs> they all sit at the edge of the fields, the water spirits climb ashore and they dry themselves in the sunshine. But the little girl knew nothing about this. She went straight to her aunt and was well received. Her aunt gave her breakfast tea and a donut. While she was eating, her aunt filled the pot with fresh oil, wrapped it into a piece of cloth, and added a few more donuts. When the little girl was ready to leave, her aunt told her, Today is a special day, and they are holding a service at the church. When the church bell rings, if you should meet, with a fairy or an elf on your way back, bow down very low to the ground so it will think that you are a molehill and it won't bother you. The little girl promised to do as she was told and went on her way. It was unusually quiet. Not a soul could she see far and wide. Neither bird nor cricket could she hear. Even the wind seemed to hold its breath. There was an eerie silence. But suddenly, the church bell rang. Before the little girl could heed her aunt's warning, a thick bush by the side of the road spread open its branches and out stepped a tall, skinny-looking little man. He sat down by the side of the road. It was the black thorn squatter who lurks in the bushes and hooks his thorns into the clothing of anyone who comes near enough. His hair and his beard and his fingernails are long, sharp, Wills. Well, the little girl was scared, so she ran across the field to find a different way home. But when she did, she got off of the trail, and suddenly she found herself face to face with the rye spinster who was combing her tousled hair. I'll have to go through the water, the frightened girl thought, and she turned and ran for the Mule River. Well, the river was only knee-deep where it flowed through the meadows, so she knew she could get across it. When she came to the water, she saw a beautiful woman sitting at the river bank. She was drying her golden hair in the morning sun, and she wore a dress of sea-green shimmering pearls. She was the wife of the green-haired water fairy. You have doughnuts. I can smell them, she called to the girl. Oh, please give me one. I haven't had a donut in a hundred years. The little girl reached into her bundle, and she gave a donut to the water fairy. When the fairy saw the pot of oil, she became even more excited. She clapped her hands and said, And you have oil? Oh, give it to me. Then I can make donuts for my little children. They have never tasted any. Since the fairy woman begged so ardently, the little girl thought that it might be all right to give her half the oil. There would be enough for her mother as well. So the water fairy was overjoyed. Come, she said, you want to cross the river. I will lead you through it down below, and I'll show you my home. A gate opened in the water, and they went inside. They climbed down a flight of glassy steps, and then entered through a curtain of rainbow-colored water drops into a large hall. It was a beautiful sight. The walls were tiled in shimmering mother of pearl and decorated with all kinds of seashells. From the ceiling 
which lay like a bluish pane of glass over the room, hung blue silver water veils and crimson trailing vines that wafted gently to and fro. The little girl could not tear herself away from all this beauty. Come, said the water fairy, I want to show you my little ones. She pointed to a large water bowl, a basin in which seven little water nymphs romped and played and chased each other. They were strange looking little creatures with frog eyes and skins between their fingers and toes so they could swim. Large pearls were braided into their green hair and they wore colorful shimmering little breeches. They behaved like fish, dunking and diving and chasing each other around. The little, girls enjo the little girl enjoyed watching them so much that she might have stayed forever. Meanwhile, the water fairy called several little water sprites over and told them to make doughnuts. Soon, the entire water house was filled with delicious aroma. Mm. The little water nymphs came waddling, sniffing the air with their little noses, and the water fairy came and grabbed a fresh doughnut right out of the pan. Pretty soon, all of them came together. They mamped and schlamped with their cheeks so full of yummy doughnuts that their mouths could hardly close. And when the dough was all gone, the little water sprites had to make some more. Meanwhile, back up above, the little girl's mother waited anxiously for her return. The child should have been back by noon, and now it was late afternoon. We have to go look for her, she said to her two little boys. She took them by the hand and went to check with her aunt. Her aunt could only tell her that the little girl was on her way home. I hope she didn't fall into the hands of something evil, she said. And then the mother remembered that she should not have sent the child out on that special morning. Oh, if only I had gone myself, she cried. My poor little girl, where could she be? She searched the area through which her daughter would have passed, and then she came to the river. Something floated on the surface of the water. A donut, cried the boys, and another one. And so it was. Two, three, four, ever more donuts surfaced and rocked like little boats towards the shore where the woman stood with her little boys. They came so close that the children could have reached the donuts with their hands. The hungry little boys were eager to eat them, but their mother said, Leave them, boys. Don't eat any of them. The river fairy has got a hold of your sister. If you eat even just one donut, she will not let her go. That was a hard test for the little boys. They had not had anything so delicious for a long time. But for their sister's sake, they obeyed. They turned and walked away. When they looked back, there was nothing on the water. It lay as clear and calm as before. Time went on, and in the summertime, at summer solstice, the farm women of the village made donuts again, and the wonderful smell wafted through the open windows and down the village street. The poor woman was out of oil again. She could provide only potato soup and dry bread for her boys. The older one of the boys left the house and went down to the river where he had seen the donuts on that spring Sunday. He stood for a little while and waited, and sure enough, the donuts began to pop up again and flowed towards him and smelled so very good as if they had just now come out of the pan. All he needed to do was reach down and take one. But his mother's warning rang in his ears. Don't take any or the water fairy will not give your sister back. The little boy restrained himself and went home hungry. Shortly, in the, shortly before the winter holidays, the aroma of doughnuts drifted down the village streets again and once more tantalized the little boys. Farm women set their tables with large bowls full of the delicious pastries. The younger one of the boys left his house. 
If he could not eat any of the doughnuts, he would at least have a look at the wonderful things that other people were eating. He stood on his tiptoes under the window of his neighbor's house and looked longingly at the doughnuts on the table. Finally, he couldn't take it any longer. He went to the river to see if the water fairy was baking again. He came to the ice-covered winter river and stared at it, waiting, hoping. And soon, in one particular spot, the ice began to melt. The hole that was created looked almost like a pan, and in it floated the most beautiful doughnuts. The little boy's mouth began to water. He reached for the doughnut, but then he remembered what his mother had said. Don't take any or the water fairy will not give back your sister. But sister was gone such a long time, he thought. She probably wouldn't come back. The doughnuts were so enticing. They looked so good. He began to shake from the cold. And he was so indescribably hungry. He stepped carefully onto the ice. He walked to the edge of the hole bent down and reached in. But suddenly, he slipped and he fell into the water. When the boy had not returned by evening, his mother became so worried. She begged the villagers to help her look for him. When they found his footprints in the snow, they followed them to the river and right up to the hole in the ice. The footprints went no further. The poor mother's pain was great. She was so worried and sad. When the snow melted, she went to the river every day to look for her lost children. Finally, spring came around again. And on a lovely spring morning, as the poor woman thought of her lost children again, suddenly the door opened and her daughter came in. With one hand, she led her youngest brother. And in the other, she carried that pot of oil. Here's the oil, mother, she said. Auntie sends her love. Then she told her adventure with the water fairy and how her little brother had come to meet her there. The woman took her children into her arms and hugged them. When she told the little girl that she had been gone an entire year, the child could hardly believe it. When her mother removed the cover from the little pot, inside she found several shiny gold nuggets inside. The kind of gold nuggets that are sometimes found in the sand along the Mule River. She took them out and instantly the half empty pot grew full to the brim. Now they could celebrate happily. The good woman prepared the dough, and it was a joy for all of them to watch the delicious doughnuts frying merrily in the pan. Snip, snap, snout, this tale is told. <laughs>